Hey folks, Mike McGee here. In today's video, we're going to be doing what you already knew we would be doing on yesterday's video or last week's video, whenever this video comes out. You already knew we're going to be eating a little bit of Red Fox. Maybe not the whole thing, but enough to say we did it. Enough to say it's good or bad. Enough to say we're crazy. David's going to be skinning it for me. I'm going to get in there and help him too, but... He has a buddy that likes to sell hides. His buddy actually does quite a bit of trapping. We don't do that much trapping, really. But when we get something nice, we just give it to the boy because they really ain't going to make enough money to make it worth our time to get it put up nice and sell it. We'll just let the boy have it and let him help, help him on his fur career. I'm amazed at how long his tail is. He can literally touch his head with his tail. Look at that unbelievable and obviously it's a male so population isn't going to be destroyed by taking out one fox as with the coyote just to show you that we're really eating fox it's not going to be nothing but fox there's that foot let's go cook it up and eat it let's go see if rusty's interested in this foot it's got a very strong and yet sweet odor of fox Rusty, I don't want to see that part of you, son. Come here, look what I got. Look here. Look here, boy. Hey, come here. I know you got a good nose. You smell it. Come on. What is it? Hmm? What is that? That's a fox. Uh-huh. Canine. Something you understand. Mm-hmm. What is it? You want it? Oh, that bad, huh? I'm going to drop it. Get it. Get it. You don't want it? Now, don't be doing that to me, son. <laughs> you don't want the fox foot? People are going to be siding with you. They're going to be saying, yep, Rusty's smarter than McGee. <laughs> Smell it. He said, nah. All right, folks, as you see, we got the fox leg here. I've washed it. I've dried it. Sometimes you dry them with paper towels. It kind of helps get if there's any hair stuck to it. Caleb has brought me something special. You can read that right there. Camp Dog. He sent me something. There might be something in here for just exactly what we need. But first, we're going to sharpen our knife up. I don't know if you've had problems in the past getting your knife razor sharp like you want them. The old... Sharpening steel, like what I use, some people have trouble with that, and they don't always get the right angle. With the old warthog, you'll get it right every time. Just like this. And when you get done, just take your little paper towel, wipe off that blade, whoa, it cut it. Wipe off that blade, make sure you don't have no metal shavings in there. Let's see what we do have here. I, I was gonna cut my meat up first, but Intrigue and suspense got the best of me. Papa Scott, he is a absolute amazing man. And he runs the camp dog. Woo dog. Look at him, look at him. So we'll be using, should we use the hot or the mild? The hot's not real hot, it's just a little spicy. The mild is what they call the non-typical, it's the mild blend. They both taste very good and they both will work good for this situation right here. So, camp dog seasoning is one thing that we've been using for years and the ones of y'all that's been following me for a while have saw me really hone in on it. Those of you that are just joining I haven't been on, uh, haven't been real vocal about it. I have used it in a lot of videos, but as far as telling you, you can get 20% off of this stuff by using the promo code McGee. And all you got to do is look in the description. You'll find a link to Camp Dog right there. So I think that takes care of everything. This here is going to be in the description too. If you want yourself a good warthog knife sharpener. So at this time, it's time to start cutting. Mr. Caleb wasn't here when I done the coyote. When I did the coyote, I separated every muscle and had them all laid out, as you remember. First of all, I'm gonna cut 
the tendon off this back muscle. I'm just basically going to cut the meat off, however, and just cut it up into pieces. We're going to throw it into a skillet and we're going to make up a recipe just out of thin air. Make it up. But we'll be using some camp dog. This knife right here, I know you're going to get sick and tired of me telling you you can pick up stuff in my descriptions, but this knife is absolutely unbelievable. Anybody that had used this knife has told me it is so good, so good for any kind of deboning, for any kind of meat cutting. Longbow Banjo, he gave it to me. I didn't know that such a knife existed. But he was a deer processor. He cut five to six hundred deer per year. One year he cut seven hundred and some on with the same knife. He did a thousand deer once with a, one of these knives. All right, that's pretty much got the bone. And we've got mainly two main pieces here to cut up. I'm just going to do the slicing and the dicing. Mainly cut it across the grain. That's the only thing I'm gonna do that's for tenderness sake. I've never had more comments on any one subject than removing glands. For some reason, that is a hot, hot button issue that some people find extremely fascinating, if not uh, intriguing. I don't know why, what the big deal is with the glands. But here is the gland. This is the hind leg. And I'm just gonna cut right down through here. There's a lot of fattiness around the gland. The gland is actually right there. That's all it is. But all that fattiness around the gland is also not the best. It's gone. I, I just can't believe how many comments I get about gland removal. Look how this leg just falls apart. Just the muscle separation is so easy. This is not a gland, but it's a tendon. And in my opinion, just as important to get out of there. But there you go. Muscle separation is really easy on this thing. Just grab it and pull. That wasn't my main goal. My main goal was to get it cut up, but there we have it. All right, here we go. We've got our meat all cut up. I've got me a container and I've got me some homemade buttermilk from our cow. People ask me all the time, how do you make buttermilk? A lot of the old timers have real good memories of buttermilk. I wasn't raised on buttermilk, so I'm not crazy about it, but my wife makes it from the milk from our cow. As you can see, nice and thick. It's perfect, it's just not my cup of tea. It's a little, well, it's like sour. Like, I like sour cream. But this here is just not my cup of tea, but it's perfect for putting meat in and letting it soak. Boy, it makes the best biscuits of anything you ever. Oh my goodness. If you've got a milk cow or if you have access to some raw milk, if you want to make buttermilk yourself, it's super easy. Take a gallon of just good old warm raw milk. Right out of the cow is, you know, warm, probably warmer than room temperature but as long as it's not colder than room temperature go to the store and get you a small amount of buttermilk that's got the culture in it you need pour that in that gallon and let it set for 24 hours you will have your buttermilk you never have to buy buttermilk starter again just always keep a cup out for your next batch buttermilk is super easy but here we go with our fox meat if you remember the coyote, we marinated it in a, a different kind of marinade. We marinated it with mustard and with Worcestershire sauce and then sriracha. But this here, we're going buttermilk. Now I'm just going to pop the lid on it and we're going to leave it in that buttermilk in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes. Oh, by the way, after you get your buttermilk made at room temperature, once it's finished making that 24 hours, then you refrigerate it. Just a little tidbit of information. All right, according to the smell, it smells like my bacon grease is getting pretty warm. Let's just put a piece in and see what it sounds like. Oh yeah. So what I'm gonna do is put it all in. Then you're gonna pop a little bit. That's all of my fox right there. Here's where the camp dog season comes into play. Pull 
might meet together here so I don't end up putting the seasoning all in my grease. And I'm just gonna lay the cam dog to it, just like that, right there. How many of you fine folks have seen wood stoves in operation? This is a Kitchen Queen wood cook stove made by the Amish for the Amish. It's already starting to come to a little bit here. Yes, sir. At this juncture, I'm thinking salt and pepper. So I'm just going to do my salt, do my pepper. Camp Dog's got salt and pepper in it, but I want to accentuate those two. And paprika. Lay some paprika on it. And then we're going to get to going with something else. I just keep having these little ideas popping into my head. Get myself a big old jug of this red wine here. I do believe that's gonna give us a little something. A little something, something right there. And I don't know what you're thinking, but when I see this right here, my mind goes to one place and one place only. Gravy. But first, there's onions. We don't wanna do this without a little bit of good old onion. Man, this is starting to smell starting to smell a little bit like pizza to me. So the first thing I think is mushrooms, which we get wild mushrooms out of the, out of the woods every year in the summer, chanterelles. And when we go to our pantry, it's like walking into the grocery store, except we got stuff grocery stores don't have. Mm. This was canned in oil. I'm not sure exactly what kind of oil, but we're gonna dump all the oil and all the mushrooms in there and it's gonna be good. Okay, it's boiling a little bit harder than I want. So I'm just gonna pull this thing, put the eye in the stove and throw that right back. I encourage you to live out of the woods, out of your fields, out of your gardens, out of your crops, anything that you've got that you can add up together will make yourself more self-sustainable. Some people say, won't you just replace those pigs with some sustainable crops or whatever? We raise sustainable crops along with pigs. Pigs are sustainable in the fact that they reproduce. I don't have to go buy no more pigs. Going in them woods, getting those mushrooms, even if it's not a convenient time when they come up, if you can somehow get it done, because everything agriculture-wise, whether it's wild or tame, and especially wild, has a very short time limit to get it done. So, do it. Time for chef's choice right here. Try out a little bit of this fox meat. not completely tender yet, but it's getting there in a hurry. A lot quicker than I was expecting. The onions are starting to get really soft. I think it's time to put some flour in here. I'm gonna start out with one third of a cup of pastry flour. And I'm just gonna sprinkle that over the entire thing. And then, I'm gonna work it in. I'm gonna go back with a third a cup of water. I love cooking as I go. I can just do whatever I want to. I don't have to be stuck down to no recipe. This is well water from Frank's. He's got a well. Gotta love that. Water is the only utility that I actually have here. I do not have any other utility, but city water I do have. So we prefer not to cook with it or drink it. Wow, it's starting to come together and looking good now. At this point, we're going to grab this so skillet and shove it over off the main heat and let it sit there and sl slow down a little bit. Mm. It can slow down right now. All right, everybody, come, come, come. We want to eat before it gets cold. Everybody 
everybody's getting this. Here, Mom. Here, Mom. Right. Where can mom sit? I'm going. <laughs> Alright, everybody, dig in and see if you like it. Oh my goodness, is that ever good? Still nice and warm, by the way. Mm. Mushroom. There's a whole, whole jar of mushroom in there. Um, onion? There's a bunch of onion in there. It's definitely foxy. Mm. Red fox. Camp dog. Yep, plenty of camp dog. Mary, you probably had the best taste buds of anybody. What does it taste like? Good? Bad? Like it tastes, Do you like it? More. Matt said he wants more. Here, Mary. Have some sustenance. <laughs> Joel, do you need any more yet? Yep. She was right. Uh, right Mom, you need more yet? No. Do you like it? Huh? She's not very talkative. I'm gonna have to talk for her. Yes, Micah, I love it. It's the best fox I ever ate. Mm. <laughs> this is our first red fox, and we ate a gray fox years ago, back before we were videoing. People think that I do this because that we are having a YouTube channel. Not true. We ate fox meat. Was this guy even born yet? that year that we caught all them. Probably, probably, but we weren't making YouTube videos back then and we were eating everything. This is not our first fox, but it's our first YouTube fox eating. And I have to say, this is a lot better than the gray fox we ate. Of course, I cooked it way more different. I added a lot of things to it. That is delicious. Can you tell I put a third cup of flour in there? Yeah. What is a... Uh, you want some more? Yeah. Matt's going in for thirds. Oh, Matt. David hasn't had seconds yet. You want seconds, David? Yeah, I had seconds. You did? Okay. You want some more, David? Yeah, I mean, I seconds. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Joe yes. got a few seconds. Not too many. <laughs> Will that tide you over, Mary? No? Yeah. Because I can make some more. We got more fox meat out there. We have a whole fox meat carcass out there we can fix right up. Hey, besides the legs. Mm. Did anybody not like it? Anybody not like it? Anybody? Let's say everybody liked it because nobody said they didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> if y'all want to know what's in it, you have to watch the video. <laughs> All of the trapping guys that I watch don't eat the stuff they trap. They don't let their animals go to waste, but they definitely don't eat them. We like to try them out, don't we, boys? Man, you said mouth today. Did you drink too much coffee for breakfast? You acting like Frank. I think you drank coffee. Just kidding, just one cup. One cup. We're going to get on out of here. We've got a lot of crazy things for you coming up. And the reason why that you subscribe to this channel because you never know what it's going to be. So we're going to get on out of here. We hope you have a great day. We'll see you on the next video.